What is going on guys, h one Mayo here, and in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys an operator guide on the Operator K. There's going to be a lot of really important stuff talked about in today's video, and at the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys five super crucial and impactful K claws that you can learn and start using today in Rainbow Six Siege. I don't want to hold you guys any longer, so let's jump right into the guide. So the very first thing I want to talk about when it comes to the Operator Cade, I want to talk about his loadout and what he brings. So as for his primary weapons, you have the choice between the AUG A3 and the TCSG. Now if you're someone who's on console or plays on controller, I do suggest you use the AUG A3. But if you're comfortable controlling the recoil, then the TCSG is also a very solid second option for your primary. It's really, really good with making nitro holes for default plants or nitroing through the floors. Also rotates in other lines of site. Which brings me to something that I want to mention with this operator is it's very important that you see and understand what utility your teammates are also bringing. So sometimes your teammate might be bringing a smoke, but he's not bringing the shotgun. So that's a time where e you either need to communicate to him to bring the shotgun or you consider bringing the TCSG for rotates and other things. As for a secondary, you have the choice between the 44 Magnum and the revolver. Now personally, I use the revolver just because I think it's overall better. Not only does it help with soft destruction if you are using the AUG A3 as your primary, but also I think it's a lot easier to manage. Now I want to talk about the secondary piece of utility. So you have the option between a nitro cell or barbed wire. Nine times out of ten I personally bring the nitro cell since barbed wire can be brought in more operators and a nitro cell can also be a lot more impactful for a round. Now the next thing I want to talk about is why Kate is better than bandit. So with bandit and placing his bandit batteries you're very restricted in the position that you can place your batteries. Meanwhile Cade as long as it is in the proximity of the Cade claw that surface barbed wire or shield will be electrified. So that's one of the main reasons why Cade is better than Bandit, especially especially for his primary piece of utility. Another reason why Cade is better than Bandit is because his Cade claws are a lot less predictable in those positions. So on the map Clubhouse, for example, if you go up to the CCTV wall as an attacker, and if the wall is electrified, you know that the enemies at least have a Cade or a Bandit. Now, if you drone the breach and see no Bandit batteries on the wall, then that tells you that it is a Cade. Now, the next step in finding the Cade Claws is either bringing an IQ or finding them on a drone. So that's another reason why Cade is better than Bandit for electrifying surfaces because of the unpredictability factor and how many different positions you can place the Cade Claws. And don't forget, I'm going to show you guys some super crucial and impactful Cade Claws at the end of the video. But back to my CCTV Clubhouse example. You can just send an Ash or Zofia or Nades below and get the Bandits off since you see them on the wall. But with Cade, it's taking up more time for the attackers, which is better for you as the defensive players. So it's kind of like getting two birds with one stone. Not only do the attackers first have to find the Cade Claw, but secondly, if you place them well and in hard to reach locations, it's going to take them more time to locate them find them and then destroy them which could be the difference maker of winning or losing a round another reason why i do believe kate is better than bandit is because if you're kate tricking which is something that i'm going to talk about later on in the video you have to pick up one piece of utility to get multiple surfaces while bandit can only electrify one surface per battery and yes i do understand that kate tricking is a little bit more difficult but i think the benefit you get out of electrifying multiple surfaces with one piece of utility is overall better the only benefit you're really getting out of bringing bandit instead of kate is the fact that bandit is a faster operator and also has a better primary weapon the mp7 but those are two very selfish things for yourself meanwhile Cade offers more in a team-based environment which is something that you should consider first when defending or attacking since rainbow six siege is a very team-based game now the next thing i want to talk about with this operator is what maps Cade is good on and to be honest with you Cade is good on every single map but where Cade thrives in situations and on maps is when a wall is very hard to reach from above or below that's when Cade really maximizes his potential for the team. So on the map Oregon, for example, in the basement, if you electrify off the elbow wall, that is a very hard to reach Cade because there's no vertical destruction. So the attackers are forced to either EMP it, Cali it, use a Twitch drone or locate it with a drone or IQ and then Maverick a hole and shoot it or destroy it. Which again brings me to a point that I've already brought up in the video, which is that is taking up more time for the attackers just so that way they can open one wall. So with Cade and well-placed claws, you're doing a lot more than just denying a wall. You're also forcing the attackers to potentially use more utility than they should and also waste more time, which is something as you playing defense is very crucial for your round win. Now, the next thing I want to talk about when it comes to the Operator Cade is what roles Cade should be fitting. 
So really, since Cade is a three armor operator and he's pretty slow and chunky, he should be playing a little bit of a more supportive role. But that doesn't mean that Cade needs to anchor every single round. If you and your defensive team decide to extend off of the bomb site into another room near it, then Cade could be playing that position potentially for the long angles provided. Also with Cade extending off of the bomb site into other areas of the map, if there are reinforcements there, if the attackers do decide to try to hard breach those walls, he could potentially Cade trick some hard breaching utility. It really really does come down to what you and your defensive team want to do with the round, but overall Cade should be playing a lot more of a supportive role since he is such a slow operator. So this means anchoring, getting on cams, giving callouts, and really trying to do as much as he can with his Cade claws on the bomb site. So now that I've kind of gone over all of that stuff, I want to go into a custom game and break down these five very crucial and impactful Cade claws. So the very first Cade Claw positions I want to talk about is going to be on the map Clubhouse on the CCTV wall. So if you've ever played this map in a ranked or competitive environment, you know how important this wall is for the attackers. And the longer you can deny it, the better you are as the defenders. So the first Cade Claw is a pretty default location, which is here in the top left corner of the red hallway. Now something really crucial about this Cade Claw is that you have to make sure you put some sort of ADS or my Magnet to support this in case there is a nade that rolls through. Also putting a Moot Jammer here is really good for denying any Twitch drones. Now the next Cade Claw is for the right panel on the CCTV wall. So if you walk into Garage and find the lounge door here, leading from mini stairs of Garage into Lounge, find this little soft panel on the ceiling, shoot out this corner here with either the Magnum or the TCSG, then throw your Cade Claw there, that will get the right panel. And as you can see here, both panels of the CCTV wall are electrified. The reason why these Cade Claws are super important and impactful is because what I said earlier about making the attackers waste more time and utility in order to get a wall open that is very crucial for their attacking round. So it's automatically setting you guys and your defensive team up for success even more by you placing two pieces of utility. Now the next Cade Claws I want to talk about are going to be on the map bank. Now for this first one there's technically two locations to place it. Once you reinforce this open hatch here you can either place it behind the flag here and it will be covered by the flag and also get the hatch. Before we carry on with the video, I want to mention a few things. You guys can get access to the official Disrupt Gaming Weapon Skin for the R4C on Ash by going to the shop tab, scrolling down to the bottom, and clicking the eSports button. I also want to mention that you guys can subscribe to the DG channel for as little as 99 cents a month for a tier membership. You guys have access to exclusive emotes, exclusive sub badges, as well as two high-quality Rainbow Six Siege backgrounds each month. Now with all of that being said, let's carry on with the video. Or you can go prone under this desk, throw it there, and it will also get the hatch. And you can obviously perfect this as well, you know, get the exact right distance and also try to place the Cade Claw behind the legs of the desk. I'm just more or less using this as an example. Now some of you might be saying, oh well this really won't work in a ranked game or competitive game or whatever. And actually you'll be very surprised that it does. It kind of goes under the thought of hidden in plain sight. As long as the attackers aren't stream sniping you, don't previously know where you're placing the Cade Claw or bring an IQ, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to try to find it. And then the next one is going to be for the admin hatch here. So to electrify this hatch, all you have to do is go on the right side of this cubicle here, Go prone, crawl into the desk, and then throw it here underneath the desk. And this one, as you can see, will also get the admin hatch. Now these next four Cade Claw spots are going to be on the map Villa. So for the first two, it's going to be for the Aviator Bar Reinforcements. So for the Aviator wall here, it's going to electrify this panel. All you have to do is walk up to this bomb chassis in Aviator, shoot these little pieces of the mailbox out there, then throw the Cade Claw behind the bomb chassis. That will get this wall. For the next one, it's even simpler. All you have to do is walk up to the bar reinforcement, go prone here. Sometimes the debris blocks this little part of the reinforcement. Walk up to it. And then place the Cade Claw as close to the reinforcement as you can, but still keep it vertical like this here. And what this does, it allows you to counter the IQ from below since it's on top of a metal reinforcement. As you can see, all four panels are electrified. This Cade Claw here should be supported by an ADS though, because they can nade over from study and get this. Now for the next two Cade Claws, it's going to get the three triple walls on statue. All you have to do is walk into this corner here near split door, look up here on this wooden beam, and then kind of eyeball it and then just throw the Cade Claw so that way the beam covers it. Now this one is super good as well because it doesn't give you a line of sight from the statue door to top red to try to shoot it. And that will electrify these two panels here. Now for this next Cade Claw, what you want to do is reinforce the right panel on the opposite side. 
And then locate the bottom right corner on the reinforcement, destroy all of it or as much as you can, and then throw the Cade Claw horizontally in this little pocket. It can still be shot from top red if they know exactly where it's at though. Now for this last Cade Claw, it's going to be on the map Oregon and to get the meeting hatch here. So all you have to do is kind of line it up here. So use this wooden beam here in the ceiling to kind of give you a point of reference. So it might take you a few tries, but all you really have to do, locate the position so that way it gets the wall on the corner and the hatch as well. So somewhere right around here, we'll get both. That's everything I have for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed or learned anything new, make sure you guys leave a like on the video and subscribe to the Disrupt Gaming channel. I also want to mention before I go again that you guys can get access to two high quality Rainbow Six Siege backgrounds each month, exclusive sub badges, as well as exclusive emotes by becoming a member here on the YouTube channel for as little as 99 cents a month. And I also want to mention one more time that you guys can get access to the official Disrupt Gaming weapon skin for the R4C on Ash by going to the shop tab, scrolling down to the bottom and clicking the esports button. That's everything for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.